Okay, I'm gonna sp I'm gonna be honest. It doesn't seem like the people in there had anything to do with the X Men. But was that the X Mansion? You know the fucking place I'm talking about. The place that fucking had the X on the door and had those weird security guards coming in and out. What was the symbol on the fucking? Explain to me this, man. Why is my foot on fucking fire? Jesus Christ! What is happening? Um, that was weird. Uh, so. You know the guys, the the security guard, it had the X symbol, I talked about it earlier, and it, it looked like Carly Morgenthau just fucking lit up the X mansion. For a minute there, I didn't know that she did that, and I was like, what the fuck, did some mutant just cause that, to that shit to explode? That looked like the fucking X mansion. The thing is, though, the X mansion is in New York, Winchester, Winchester, New York. I don't remember where it said where it said that was from, but it wasn't fucking New York. So what the fuck? Winchester's in New York, right? Fuck, I don't know. Geography. G geography. I'm not good with geography. But um That's fucked. <laughs> if they just blew up the X Mansion. And who were those people if they were in the X Mansion? What the fuck was that? Is that the X Mansion? What the fuck was the symbol? I don't fucking get it. Guys, I'm a fucking idiot. I was born in Germany, and I did not know that that sign, you know the one, was a German street sign. Had nothing to do with- Oh my god, my computer is pissing me off. Um, had nothing to do with the, um, the X-Men. So that Gambit theory can go out the window, too. Anything I said about the sign, you can throw out the fucking window, because I'm fucking t t t stupid. I'm fucking tarted. That's all there is. Um. Yes. Any questions? <laughs> it's a it's a blue sign with a red X along it, um, and it's got a red outline as well. Um, it's a German stop sign. This me or it's a German sign that means no stopping. I'm a fucking idiot. Oh my god. Alright, my, my April Fool's video, I'm probably just going to scrap it. I, I don't I don't know. I'm at the very least going to mark it as April Fool's if I don't scrap it, because I, I just didn't have time to put one out. I really wanted to. I really got fucking all this cool shit, so I'm a little bummed out that I didn't get to partake in my favorite holiday. Um, But, well, actually my favorite holiday is my birthday because I'm a self-absorbed asshole, but whatever. Um, but anyway, it's not a fucking holiday. Um, what the fuck was I even going to talk about? Ah, yes, I'm watching Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I haven't finished this episode yet, because I pulled a double at work, so that means I'm like 10 minutes into the episode. 10 minutes, something like that. But I was looking at the fucking, I, I was looking at this one scene, I saw some weird symbol, I was looking at it for like 5 minutes, I was like, what the fuck is that? And... Is that the, what the fuck I think it is? Is that what the fuck I think it is? Is that what the fuck I think it is? What the fuck is that? You guys know what I'm talking about. There's a symbol right after Zemo and the Zemo and the gang leave in their car. It cut and and Bucky's like, or Sam's like, 
You're not gonna move your seat up, are you? And then Bucky's like, no. What the fuck was that symbol? What the fuck? Tell me right now. I'm over here looking at this pop figure I just got as an Easter gift. Venomized X-23. What the fuck was that symbol? Why did you say that name? Alright, before I go into this, there's a fucking line at the end of this movie <laughs> that, oof, that oof, the, the room got real quiet right now. If only you can see what I'm doing with my hands right now, I'm doing some weird shit right now. <laughs> but <laughs> Joker's talking shit, and Batman is like, funny that you talk about the people who died in my arms. Because when I fell with Harley Quinn, she told me to make your death slow. And make no mistake, I will. Fucking kill you. I was like, oh shit, dude. Batman's got a mouth on him. And Joker got real fucking quiet after that. I mean, after like maybe like 15 seconds, he was back to, you know, talking up a storm, but damn. He got real fucking quiet. Oh man. Oh man, this is like, oh. Oh. I love that tease for season two, or episode two. I really, fuck, movie two, the, I really hope something comes of it, <laughs> but, dude, right at the end, Batman versus Joker, he's like, make no mistake, I will fucking kill you. <laughs> they talk about Robin, they talk about Harley, um, and then we see that Batman's working with Joker and Deathstroke. Oh, I'm gonna get into that later. Dude, this may be one of the best movies I've watched ever. I'm gonna remember it, but I'm probably not gonna go back to it anytime soon due to just fucking sheer length and the fact that I have, you know, things that I like to do with my time, aside from watching the same, admittedly, very amazing four-hour movie over and over again. Honestly, if this movie was two hours, I'd probably watch it tomorrow. But no, I'll probably watch it in like three days. So. Anyways, though, this movie was amazing. It introduces Iris, it introduces, um, Mira, it introduces, uh, fucking Joker, sort of, um, Deathstroke for sure. Yeah, like, obviously, Mira. Obviously, Mira will show up in, uh, or showed up in Aquaman prior to this movie's coming out, but. If this was always the plan for this movie, which I, I don't think all of it was always the plan, but let's just assume it was, this would have been Mera's debut. Um, Deathstroke and Lex Luthor, they have a very similar scene to what they had before, but, um, like not, you know. And then Joker just fucking shows up in that nightmare sequence. I, I, I thought, like, I had accidentally missed something, like, I thought, like, when I got to the end of the movie, I was like, so where the fuck is the nightmare sequence? Is it going to be like a post credit scene or something? And it might as well have been. Guys, HBO Max um, sucks at being able to scroll through the credits and stuff. So um, I'm just going to give you a heads up. I, I did it, and it was kind of infuriating the way that the system worked. But uh, there are no post credit scenes. So don't, don't, don't worry about it. I'm sparing you a little bit of an, um, a, a minor hassle. But dude, everyone gets the spotlight in this movie, except arguably Superman. Superman gets a fair bit of action. Oh, Martian Manhunter's got like two scenes in this movie, and he doesn't have a whole lot of action. What the fuck was happening to Bruce Wayne, though? Something in that in, in the end of that movie, he looked real fucking weird. I don't know what that was all about. The end of that movie, it looked like they just fucking CGI'd him together. I was getting some, I was seriously getting some fucking Luke Skywalker or Mandalorian vibes. Only this looked marginally better. You know, I could be just be like an ass, and maybe he's just not wearing makeup or something, because it looked really weird. It was uncanny, dude. It was like, well, I can tell who that is, but at the same time, what the fuck is going on with his face? I don't know, man. Something was definitely afoot there. Um, 
But dude, the movie... It could have also just been a filter or something. You know, the filter makes things look weird all the time, but... Nah, there was something weird there. Um... But in that nightmare... Because the flat Like... The version of The Flash in the nightmare... Okay, let's rewind a little bit. So, this movie opens up with Superman's death at the end of Batman vs. Superman. Um, but it shows, like, a new perspective. You saw it in the trailer. He awakes, awakens the mother boxes. And they call forth to, um... Steppenwolf and Darkseid. And oh my god, this movie. Uh, I can't wait for part two. I hope that part two happens. Like, WB needs to get that shit the green light immediately. But, uh... Yeah, more or less, um... The... The so-called Snyder Cut, as it were. So fucking good. So fucking good. So fucking good. Um, the Batmobile gets a huge amount of... A huge bit of spotlight. That's not them, Diva. It's not them. Sit. Okay, fine. Okay. But yeah, so fucking good. Like... So, uh, I fucking rewound again, didn't I? Um, basically, we start up with Batman vs. Superman, and we see uh, what's happening next. Um, right after that, we see that Batman's trying to unite the team. And then, him and Wonder Woman are palling it up. Zack Snyder said he wanted to give a Bruce Wayne, uh, or he wanted to have a Bruce Wayne and Lois Lane, uh, sort of romance in the movie. Um, fuck no. That would have been stupid. So, uh, yeah, the, um... The Awakened Mother Boxes, um... Oh my god, I hate interruptions. They make my brain reset. What the fuck? So, you know, the Lois Lane, Bruce Wayne thing. That would have been fucking stupid. How is Superman gonna die, Batman feel guilty, and then he's just gonna be like, Yo, I'm Mr. Steel, your girl. <laughs> like, I, I don't get it. That's so fucking dumb. That would have been stupid. I, I, hate, I hate studio interference, but I would have been like, Yo, dog, um... That's for the best. A Batman Wonder Woman romance makes way more sense in this universe and in just general. Once Batman's able to get over the whole powers thing, would have worked out fine. But, um, yeah, Bruce, uh, Trying to get the team together, Diana keeps showing up in it, or keeps coming in and out of the back cave. And then uh, they go talk to Aquaman, and he's like, nah, I'm fine. I'm, I'm good. So they go talk to Barry, and he's like, yeah, sure, I'm in, unquestionably, or undoubtedly. And Wonder Woman's like, or then Wonder Woman goes to talk to Cyborg, and Cyborg's like, nah. And then he's like, psych, gotcha. And Aquaman, like, right at the last minute is just like, yeah, I guess I'll save you from Steppenwolf. So the league's together. They figure out how to go resurrect Superman, and they dig him up from his grave. He goes crazy, and the fight scene in this movie is way better than what we got in, um... Uh, the theatrical cut, that goes without saying. They changed that fight scene in that movie? It's so dumb. Like, they fucking went, and they were like... They were like, yeah, why don't we change this? It made no sense to change it, and it hindered the movie. Um, we get Superman holding Batman by his neck in the theatrical cut. But this one, Superman is just like, fucking destroy. And also, Superman talks way too much in the theatrical cut during that scene. Whereas, he does not have any lines whatsoever in that scene in this movie. It's like, we get what he's thinking, so you don't need to spell it out for us. Have you seen um, the Star Wars Special Editions? Like, in the original Return of the Jedi, you got Darth Vader, and he's just kind of looking around at Palpatine, and he's looking at Luke, and he's like, 
Well, I gotta stop that shit. But now, in um, the special editions, Vader just says no, no, no. It's like you don't need to, you know, you don't need to have him talk. We get what he's saying. Nothing. Like he's saying nothing. So, uh, yeah. But uh, there are a lot of beats that I don't really want to bother explaining because you'll see them in the movie and they're not really that important. Um, it's just really set up. And this is not going to be a breakdown or a play-by-play, -play, just my general thoughts, right? But uh, Martian Manhunter shows up at the Kent house talking to... Um, or at Lois's apartment, I guess, talking to uh, Lois under the guise that he is um, Martha. And then he turns into Martian Manhunter, and he's like, whoa, whatever, man, I'm fucking a Martian Manhunter. And he turns into Swanrick, Swanrick, I think is his name. And he's like, the world needs you too, Miss Lane. And uh, so, yeah, I don't, I don't know why he turned back into Martian Manhunter before turning into Swanrick. I guess they wanted to confirm that those two are the same guy. But it's a lot like Darth Maul igniting his lightsaber in, at the end of Solo. It's like, why did you do that? Exactly. Yeah, I'm just talking about Justice League and I'm just bashing the shit out of Star Wars. That's kind of weird. Um, hey, Diva, what's up? But, um... Yeah, so... Then, um... When they gear up to fight, Superman's back, and uh, they're they're gearing up to fight uh, Steppenwolf. So, damn it! All right, so like, um, where the fuck was I, Scoob? So they're taking the battle to Steppenwolf, and I was like, dude, this would be the best fucking video game ever. And so, <laughs> Batman's in the Batmobile, and he's not doing so well, and he's like, ah, fuck, I'm just gonna go in and just fucking, rah, I'm gonna ram, and then this laser comes out of nowhere, it hits, it almost hits the Batmobile, and then Wonder Woman sh just comes up with her shield, then fucking deflects that gay shit, and then, um, like, Aquaman starts, like, just, what the fuck did he do, even? He, it seemed like he was flying for a second, but he doesn't fly, so that was, um, but Flash, you know, he's running on my side, and then the lead just, oh, he must have been being held onto by, um, Cyborg. So, yeah. Dude, that would be great. Um, and then he's, Batman's just gunning through parademons, just like, yeah, 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 yeah. Ultimately, this isn't as different as I expected it to be from the theatrical cut, but it is way fucking better. It's one unified vision. There's no studio interference. There's, well, aside from one instance, and there's just, it, oh, it's amazing. It really is. It's four hours, though, so... It took me a few days to watch it. Unfortunately. I woke up... Yesterday, getting... No. Fuck. So, yeah, wait, it wasn't a few days ago. It was, uh... Or it wasn't a few days, because today's the 19th. So, it was one day, or two days, that it took me to watch it. But I had to work a lot to, uh, yesterday, so it felt like it was fucking forever. Dude, I, I wasn't even... I, I normally clean tables, and I'm fine with that. I'm happy with that. I'm content with that. But cleaning dishes was a nice change of pace this time around. I was like, fuck yeah, I don't need to clean no more tables today. That's fucking sick. I'm out here cleaning tables, and my boss is just like, hey, you're not very useful out here. And I was like, ouch, bro. And he's like, that's not what I meant. I meant come do dishes, please. I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. It's like, fucking ouch, man. But yeah, we're good. Uh, anyways, so I'm talking the last shit, but actually it was really fun yesterday. Um, but, uh, yeah, basically, this movie, oh, so good. I, I keep saying that this movie is so good, that's gonna be like a running joke. This movie is so good. Um, but, like, really, this, um, once we get past the Batmobile stuff, uh, the Batmobile gets fucking obliterated, which kind of unfortunate um but then batman kills a bunch of parademons and he steals their laser guns and he just starts gunning down more parademons and then barry gets fucked up and i thought he was gonna die but then barry just like 
tells his body to heal, and then it heals, and then he runs again. But anyways, that these parademons have been fucking stormtroopers this whole time, and then suddenly Barry's moving at the speed of light, and it fucking hits. I was like, what the fuck? I was very bamboozled by the prospect of it actually hitting or something. Um, it was so jarring, like, you know, you're not hitting anything, and then suddenly a stormtrooper hits Barry. And then right at the ending, I almost wonder right at the ending of the movie is where Crisis on Infinite Earths takes place because he goes through that Speed Force portal. That feels like a good time to put that there. But dude, this movie was brilliantly stylized. It was brilliantly done. Um, Batman gets a few good kills in. Wonder Woman does a really jarring kill in the movie at the beginning. At the beginning of the movie. Wonder Woman freaking um, just throws this guy into a wall so hard his head explodes. I was like, alright. And then, um, and then, uh, uh I, I like how they portrayed Flash's speed as if he's gotta be like very, very fucking careful every time he does something. I hope they don't go through with that too much if they do a sequel or in the Flash movie, but because the Flash and Quicksilver just being able to just do whatever they want without having to be careful is really cool in my opinion. And you have Flash who's like trying to save Iris but he's trying not to touch her at the same time. Diva, it's not fucking them. But, um, yeah, so, Barry's just trying to be very fucking careful with Iris. Uh, Iris clearly knows she's the, he's the Flash now. Um, that pet shop owner's got some idea, I'm sure. And I, I just loved this movie so fucking much. I can't wait to watch it again, but I'm gonna wait a little while. That, that runtime was nothing to scoff at. I'm going to do a more in-depth timeline analysis when I've had more time to sit on it. Um, not timeline analysis, but timeline breakdown and reviews and stuff like that. When I've had more time to sit on it. I'm going to review like all of Zack Snyder's DCEU movies. All of the stuff that fits into his movies anyways. Um, with Starting with Wonder Woman. Batman, or Wonder Woman. Man of Steel. Batman vs. Superman. Suicide Squad. And then Justice League. Uh, or Zack Snyder's Justice League. And then I'll do the same thing again in chronological order for uh, what we'll call Justice League Earth 1, I guess. Because I think a really good way to continue this brand without causing brand confusion. Because you know what, WB, they were like, well, you can't have two, a version of Batman on TV and a version of Batman in the movies because that would be confusing. They kind of called me an idiot, right? I was like, what are you fucking stupid? Um, thinking I'm stupid? But, but, uh, Batman, but I, I think having, I think if you release Zack Snyder's Justice League 2, and then you release Justice League 2, that could be genuinely kind of confusing. So here's what you do. You rebrand everything in Zack Snyder's universe as Earth-1 and rebrand everything in the other universe as Earth-2. There you go. And then eventually you can have some sort of crossover and stuff like that. It, it, it'd be, yeah, I think it'd be pretty good. Diva, if you're doing this stuff, if you would just stay put, now, get on the bed. So, um, anyways, like, basically Earth 2, um, would be the old stuff, and Earth 1 is the, or I guess Earth 1 is the old stuff, and Earth 2 is the new stuff, and so, yeah, I think that'd be a good way to rebrand it. Uh, 
it's significantly less confusing that way. And then everything going forward is a part of, yeah, so just rebrand it, or at least marketing that explains it. And I think that's how you do it. Um, Earth 1 and Earth 2 labeling might be kind of confusing, though. Because we don't even know what the DCEU designation is. As it's the only thing to not get a designation during crisis. And crisis... Um, should we count crisis as part of Zack Snyder's universe or the other one? Because you know what? I think I'm going to review that, too. Just because I like watching it. I think we'll count it as separate. But, uh, yeah, back to the nightmare thing. Um, no. So, clearly my mind's all jumbled because I just finished it and I'm super excited, you guys. So, sorry, the more precise review will come later. This is just, like, a thoughts and I'm all over the place. So, let's rewind a little bit. Um, and action. So, they, the team fights Steppenwolf in a hard, hard battle. They've got no secret weapon, and Steppenwolf is a bit much for any of them to handle. So, Steppenwolf, um, he, he's kicking their ass, and so Alfred, uh, we cut to Alfred having, a, or talking with Superman, and Superman, and he's like, Bruce said you'd come, let's hope you're not too late, and then they fucking, they fucking fight, they, fu they fight, they fucking fight, alright, they fucking fight. And, um, yeah, one Superman lands a bunch of, like, a really lot, like, a lot of fucking hits on Steppenwolf. Uh, and then there's some other shit going on, too. Uh, Superman just fucking throws, or, like, punches Steppenwolf into oblivion. And, um, uh, there's actually some nightmare stuff I want to rewind about later. But it punches Steppenwolf into oblivion and uh, fights uh, or sees like a portal through to Darkseid. And so Darkseid gets ready to fight them and Superman just <laughs> launches Steppenwolf back at him. And Wonder Woman does this really unnecessary neck chop or like, like wall jump and then chops Steppenwolf's head off and then both the head and the body go through the portal. And I'm like... The way Darkseid acts, he clearly didn't care too much about Steppenwolf. Um, but he, uh, that, I, I don't care how little you care about your son, that shit sends a message, alright? That's all Wonder Woman was trying to do anyways, I guess. Because there, there is no way Wonder Woman was trying to do anything other than send a message. That shit was unnecessary. Sure, Steppenwolf would be back eventually. But you can just, like, not do it that way. Like, Superman could have just held down Steppenwolf and then Wonder Woman chop his head off. No, she's like, I'm gonna send a fucking message, you bastard. You stupid bastard. So, yeah. Uh, I, I thought this movie was great. Um, Love the ending. The nightmare sequence that I wanted to talk about several times over. Let's get into it already. Um... Oh, actually, the thing that really needs to be talked about first. They have an ending scene that's almost exactly like what Joss Whedon has shot. Um, just the dialogue is different. He's like, Joss Whedon had one good idea. Yeah, so either way, there's gotta be a Justice League 2 and a Justice League Snyder Cut 2 thing. I don't fucking know. Um, because they're, they're filling different stories here, clearly. But basically, uh, Zack Snyder... Um, put in the scene, and Lex Luthor was like, oh yeah, you, well, you want to know something? Uh, Bruce Wayne? Uh, yeah, he's fucking Batman, and I was like, what the fuck? And then Deathstroke goes in, and he's like, oh, well, we do have something to celebrate. And then, like, the next, the very next fucking thing is the nightmare sequence. We see Batman get out of a car. Uh, he's got two figures behind him. At first I thought it was Wonder Woman, and then I was like, oh no, that's Aquaman. And I was like, oh fuck, it's Mera. And burning. But, um... I don't think those nightmares are actually happening. 
I think they're just like visions of what could happen. So just replace Mero with another character or recast. Because uh, we seriously don't need Amber Heard uh, in these movies. Shitty human being syndrome. I sorry, I thought that was very distracting. I was like, how can you have this bitch in this movie? Anyways. <laughs> yeah, I got pissed off a little bit just now. Um, so. <laughs> anyway. Uh, the. Uh, Mara's like, she killed Arthur. Oh, also we see Barry in his uniform, in his outfit from BVS. Uh, but he's like, she killed, or Superman killed Arthur. Do you know what it is like to lose someone you love? And Joker's like, he does. He lost his mother. And Bruce's like, be very careful. He lost his father. Oh, that's not very careful. And he lost his adopted son. And Batman's about ready to beat the shit out of him. <laughs> and then Deathstroke's working with him too. So Batman's teaming up with Deathstroke and Joker. It's like, what the fuck? What the fuck kind of sci-fi action is this? Um, and so yeah, the team is now Cyborg, Mera, Deathstroke, Joker, Batman, Flash. Also, I don't really know what's going on with Lois Lane. There's a one really weird CGI shot in uh, the movie where Cyborg gets to look into a mother box and he sees like the future, a future, and um, this future has a uh, Superman holding someone. At first, I was like, "Oh, look, it's Batman." They did that in one of the movies uh, or in one of the comics. Uh, no, I guess that was Lois. I'm a little confused because. It, if you ask me, that doesn't make any sense. Um, why would Lo Superman blame Batman if... Well, if to be frank, that, um... That there's no way he could have... So I'm very fucking confused. So, uh, yeah, this, this movie was fucking fantastic. We have Martian Manhunter at the end, um... And, uh, yeah, that's nice. Uh, the only thing I think that the... And, yes, I found one thing that the uh, theatrical version did better. Uh, I think the Green Lantern fighting Steppenwolf was slightly better than the Green Lantern fighting Darkseid. Because... In the dark, in the dark side fight, in the Snyder cut, um, he just shoots a bunch of green lasers at the guy. Uh, but in the theatrical version, he creates like a hammer construct, and I thought that was cooler. Um, but that's like the one thing that the other one did better. The only fucking thing I think. Uh, so the green Wrigley ruse wasn't doing anything for me. I was hoping that that shit would get hyper-violent. But uh, seeing Zeus and Ares team up was kind of cool. Ares wasn't in the um, theatrical version. So yeah, like, seriously, everything else was better in this version. Just smelling the little nitpick. Because as I was watching that, I was like, ah, fuck, he dies in a cooler way, but... Uh... So yeah, um, I'm gonna, totally gonna watch this again. But I'm gonna wait till I do my review. I'm gonna wait till I watch all the other ones to do a review on them. And then I'll do a review on the DCEU as it currently is. Um, with the same watch order. No, we put Wonder Woman 87, 84. Uh, but why the fuck, where the fuck did 87 come from? We put Wonder Woman 84 in the, um... In, in in between Man of Steel and Wonder Woman. But yeah, uh, you can't really, I think... 
<laughs> yeah. Um, the new DCEU it really isn't that coherent. Um, but the old one that Zack Snyder was working on kind of worked. Like, at the very least, there weren't a whole lot of plot holes. But now you find plot holes wherever you fucking look in the new one. So, gotta say, hmm, although I think movies like Shazam and Aquaman are really good, I thought Wonder Woman 84 was really good, but it didn't, it didn't jive. Like, why is it set in 1984? Why, why the plot line that it used, why did it use the plot line that it used? And it kind of contradicts what Wonder Woman says in Justice League and BVS. So, that is kind of some BS. But we'll get to that later. Um, gotta stop showing my hand. So yeah, um, see you guys later. Uh, I guess I will say I give this a 9 out of 10. And we'll see how I feel about it later. Later. a series of glass cabinets have appeared in front of Catwoman. Isn't that right, my dear? I see you then, Eddie. So there's some, something I should say um, about the Justice League thing I said. Um, at the end, uh, I said Ben Affleck looked really weird and it looked like some bad CGI. Um, oh, damn, I think the cats have defiled this room with the litter box. Uh, but... Uh, apparently it's the filter that they were using. It made everything all gray, and, um, Ben Affleck was, um, he looked different because, uh, I, I don't really remember why, but he looked different. So, the combination of things was just very jarring considering he didn't look like that in the rest of the movie. But yeah, no biggie, just, um, I don't need people calling me out for calling someone ugly, even though that's not really what I meant. I just meant there was something different about it. So, gonna just keep that there and... Yeah, pretend like that never happened. Later. Um, don't expect to be sinking your claws into too many more. 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 So I just thought of something cool. Um, it probably won't happen, but on technicality, I really hope it does. Um, Scott Pilgrim is finally out uh, again. I hope it doesn't disappear this time. You remember the Deadpool game? It disappeared on the exact same day as Scott Pilgrim during the Great Marvel Purge. And uh, then it came back, and we were all like, hey, I wonder if Scott Pilgrim's coming back, too. Um, it didn't, uh, until now. But uh, Deadpool disappeared again. Deadpool's gone. Is Scott Pilgrim going to be here for, like, three days, and then peace, I'm out, fuckers? Like, I hope that's not what happens. But uh, it'd be sick if the way Ubisoft decided to hold, uh, hold on to the license is by um, putting him out on, uh, putting him in like a new game and putting him in um, Smash Bros. Yeah, that's right, I fucking said it. Put Scott Pilgrim in the game. It'd be cool if like he had, um, if it was like a Simon and Richter Belmont situation. So, certain moves, uh, like, like, it would, um, 
he wouldn't be an Echo Fighter for anyone or anything like that, and he wouldn't have an Echo Fighter, presumably. But perhaps um, you play as Scott, Ramona, Steven, and Kim. Uh, and then they have, like, variations and stuff. Stevens is Wallace, and um, Kim's is uh, Knives. But then you also have Nega, Scott, and Nega, Ramona, or whatever. Hey, Diva. Hey, Diva. Woo, 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 woo. You can't get on my bed right now. You peed on it earlier. So, I have to clean it. The sheets are still in the washer. So, um, yeah, the, uh, um, that'd be cool. So, like, you know, alts. And, uh, with uh, Simon and Richter, uh, Simon borrows a lot of things from Richter, and Richter borrows a lot of things from Simon. Uh, the, you know, the old, the old quote from Sakurai. So, who's really an echo fighter of who? Um, you know, so just make them alts and give Scott or give everyone like Ramona's hammer as a few moves. Just be diverse. You know, maybe even Scott and Ramona and Steven Stills can do the, um, uh, that weird sneezing thing that Kim does. Or all of them can use Ramona's hammer. That sort of thing. I think they'll be fucking sick. Am I the only one who thinks that would be dope? Because, I mean, it, it, it sounds dope, don't it? Dope it. Um, yeah. So, also, Scott Pilgrim footage is going to be in the background of this video, hopefully. I'll have to show you first, won't I? You'll never defeat me! Never! The future is mine to Never! Well, I am Huh. I think I finally broke him. Worse. He's lost control of the Time Stone. There's no telling what sort of damage a madman such as he could do to the laws of nature. Whoa, hey, not a good idea. I know what I'm doing. These things need to be put in a safe place. Your pocket is not a safe place, Space Bro. That's funny. Because this one has been doing just fine in there. You telling me he had one of those stones all along, and he didn't bother using it? As much as I appreciate a timeless weapon like yours, I prefer an immortal one like mine! Whatever evil the hand is invoking can stay in hell. I'll send you there to greet it instead. It is too late, assassin. The beast is coming. <laughs> <laughs> 